Today you're going to be learning about what are called rational exponents, and rational exponents are the same thing as saying fractional exponents. So something that is rational is something that is fractional. So if I have something like x um, to the exponent of m divided by n, that is the same thing as saying the nth root of x to the m power. So a couple of vocabulary words for you. M is going to be considered your power, and that can be written a couple different places. It can be written inside like you see the M here. You, it could also be written as N to the X power, all of that to the M power. So it could be written on the outside um, up here, but it is going to be written in the place where you would normally see an exponent. The N, your denominator, is called your index, and that is the radical. Like that tells you what root you're taking. It is the same thing as your root. So if your index is 2, then you're taking the square root. If your index was 4, you're taking the fourth root. If your index was 3, you're taking the third root. The easiest way to help you remember this is if you can remember the acronym TIBO. TIBO stands for top in, bottom out. So that means whatever is on top, which is the 2, is what's going to go inside the square root. So we're going to or inside the radical, so we're going to put x to the second. And the bottom number that is of the fraction, the 3, is going to be our index, and that's going to go here on the outside. So the biggest thing is just going back and forth between forms. So if I have x to the 4 fifths, that is the same thing as saying the fifth root of x to the fourth power. So these two forms, they mean the exact same thing. They're just, it's just interchangeable. And sometimes it's easier to see it written as a rational, um, or sorry, as a radical. Sometimes it's easier to see it written as an exponent. It just depends on the problem. So currently I have the next one, 49 to the 3 halves. Well, I re can rewrite that as the square root of 49 to the third power. Well, this case, it's actually easier to see this as a radical because when you think about the square root of 49, well, the square root of 49 is really 7, so this becomes 7 to the third power. And 7 times 7 times 7 is going to give us an answer of 343. So this one actually worked out to be an answer. And any time that they have numbers in there, like this one, it usually is going to work out and simplify to something much prettier. If I have 64 to the 5 sixths, that's the same thing as saying the 6th root of 64 to the 5th power. Well, the 6th root of 64 is actually 2, and 2 to the 5th power is going to give us 32. So again, what was on the denominator became my index, became my root, and what was my numerator was my exponent there. And then lastly, I have the square root of 100a and to the first power. Well, if I don't, um, if thinking about exponents, if I have an exponent of 1, I don't actually have to write that. Um, and same thing if I have a square root, I don't technically have to put a 2 here. But remember that my denominator becomes my index and my numerator becomes my power, which I don't have to write if it's a 1. So I have the square root of 100a. Well, I can take the square root of 100, which is 10. I cannot take the square root of a, so it's going to be 10 square root of a. This time I'm going the other direction. So I have the fourth root of 2 to the 7th power. Um, 2 to the 7th power, or sorry, the fourth root of 2 to the 7th power is going to be 2 to the 7 over 4 power. Um, you could try and figure this one out, but it doesn't actually simplify at all. Um, 2 to the 7th power is 128, and you cannot take the fourth root of that, so this is really the best form to leave it in. Um, so on this next one, I have the square root of 169 to the 3rd power. Well, that is the same thing as 169 to the 3 halves power. Remember, if there is no index, there's no number outside, that number is a 2. Um, and you can type this in your calculator if you want to, or you can think about it. The square root of 169 is 13. And so this problem is really 13 to the third power, which is going to give us 2197. Again, if you wanted to, you could type this in the calculator, and it would give you the answer 2197. You could try that with 2 to the 7 fourths if you wanted to. And if you type that in, then it's going to give you 3.363. So this one you could see is not going to be a pretty number.
The last one I have is the seventh root of 36 to the 14th power. It seems like it's going to be awful, so let's rewrite this. 36, the 14 is going to go on top, the 7 is going to go on bottom. Well, this one actually works out really nicely because 14 divided by 7 is really 2. So this becomes 36 to the second power, and 36 squared is actually 1296. So the answer to this problem would have been simplified to 1296.